I work for uh, a company called BlackRock. All of these financial institutions, they buy politicians. You can take this big ton of money, and then you can start to buy people. Let me tell you, it's not through who's the president. It's who's controlling the, the wallet. So it's, it's the And who's that? The hedge funds, BlackRock, the banks. These guys are campaign financing. Yep, you can buy your candidates. Obviously, we have the system in place. First, there's the Senate. These guys are rich. You got 10 grand, you can buy a senator. I can give you 500k right now. No question to ask. Yeah. I'm gonna do it. So we're done. Does, like, everybody do that? Does BlackRock do that? Yeah. It doesn't matter who wins. They're so good. They're, they're my popular response. BlackRock manages 20 trillion. It's incomprehensible numbers. I'm the person who headhunts people to my other firms, so I would approach you and be like, hey, this is a good reason why you should come here for us. Like, you're kind of like a f***ing gatekeeper at Blackrock. Yeah, I am. I, I decide people's fates. Every f***ing day, I literally decide how somebody's life is going to be shaped. That's so powerful. I love it. Yeah, it's... it's I don't know, the, the whole thing of, like, domination and from a concept is just... It's, it's so interesting. How do they run the world? You acquire stuff. You diversify, you acquire, you keep acquiring, you spend whatever you make in acquiring more. And at a certain point, your risk level is, is super low. Like, imagine you've invested in um, like 10 different industries from food to to drinks to like technology, right? One, one of them fails, it doesn't matter. You have nine others to, to pick you up. Risk management is, is inherently in just about everything. And in the finance space, it's all about, it's, 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 well, it's all about the money you make. You don't, you don't let it sit. You're like, you keep using it over and over and it just- Reinvest. Yeah, and it exponential growth. And then once you just own a little bit of everything, is that where the control? Yeah, you own a little bit of everything. And that little bit of everything gives you so much money on a yearly basis that you can take this big ton of money and then you can start to buy people. Obviously, we have the system in place. First, there's the Senate. These guys are rich. You got 10 grand, you can buy a senator. It doesn't matter who wins. They're so they're, they're my popular I can give you 500k right now. No questions asked. Yeah. I'm gonna do it. So we're done. They're like, yeah, of course. And Why not? Does like everybody do that? Does BlackRock do that? Based on everything we know now, uh -huh. when they say to sell, does you know, that mean we should buy? And so, yeah. It's like, uh, you know Jim Cramer? If you do uh, exactly the opposite of what he's advising, you actually make money. Huh? Yeah. It's like, it's called the, the inverse Cramer. Larry Fink recently sold $100 million worth of BlackRock. Oh, uh, wow. Damn, Larry, that's not a good sign. The people who trade and make money, they do this the moment the information is out. And that info is typically, typically disseminated at private levels first before it gets the information. Mm -hmm. If you want to invest smart, there's a tracker that tracks all politicians and where they have their stocks. Preemptively, if the stock price, if we think the stock price is going to tank, we're going to sell so that so that we, we sell it high, it tanks, and we buy back. And we made, well, we didn't make, but we preserved, preserved, I don't know, a few mil. You're like an undercover reporter. Really? No, no, don't know how people worry about this stuff? No, don't, 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 don't people don't give a shit. This is, this is beyond them. It's been said that it's easier to fool a man than to convince him he's been fooled. Yes, miss, will you do another ETF? How about an XRP ETF? I know you got e the ether out there. I, we, How about XRP? Can we, you answer that? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want me to. I do. Well, I can't. <laughs> All right, they're giving me the wrap. So if XRP wasn't the chosen cryptocurrency, why would so many global esteemed smart money institutions and venture capital firms like Anderson Horowitz, Google Ventures, Santander, Standard Chartered, SBI Holdings, CME Group, BlackRock, and many others invest in Ripple, the parent company of Coin XRP. You guys let me know in the comments below because I'm genuinely curious. And in this video, we're going to talk about it because ex-Ripple Robert McKinnick, who is the head of global digital assets for BlackRock, 
also co-wrote the XRP value model, but somehow Larry Fink can't talk about an XRP ETF. So don't let them fool you. The salesmen know exactly what XRP is. They know the exact plan that's taking place and they're getting ready to usher it in over the next few years. So right now through the 19th of this month, they're hosting the World Economic Forum, uh, the annual meeting over in Davos, Switzerland. And Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse will be taking stage to talk about the future of blockchain technology in the global financial space. And if we look on the World Economic Forum official website, we see Ripple plastered front and center. And Monica Long, who's the president of Ripple, told Financial News the sector needs mature players who can help world leaders and traditional finance to see beyond the hype. So they're working with key world leaders behind the scenes and Ripple, Circle, Coinbase, Stellar, and Hedera are some of the prominent crypto names attending this year's forum, which is taking place right now. So Ripple has attended the past two years, and Christine Lagarde has recently announced that the digital euro is entering the preparation phase, and she also has a meeting with uh, Michael S. Barr, a former Ripple advisor. To um, survive, but it will be between those who are cannibalized because they are not seeing it coming and they're not embracing it and those who self-induce that cannibalization, and I'm using cannibalization on purpose because it's a bit of a striking, horrible word, but it's really what it means. It's you're going to disrupt your business model, you're going to change it, you're going to reduce your cost, you're going to expedite your transactions, and you're going to continue to inspire confidence because you will build that on the basis of an existing backbone, which is your bank and the confidence relationship that you've established with your customers. So that's where I see changes happening now if you think of circle and ripples and all those that that's where they are active and and uh, helpful now back in 2017 american express partnered with ripple and santander who's also a partner they worked to create amex's fx international payments platform where they linked the uk and us ripples treacher and said the integration routes non-card payments through the shared payment network for nearly instant auditable cross-border payments where eventually this will be working in tandem with the swift system which moves over 25 trillion dollars in daily volume i used to work for swift i was swift for 20 years so swift is flowing through my veins swift is the pre preeminent messaging system for the financial industry which covers say payments fx trade in, in terms of uh, securities, et cetera, not to reconciliations, et cetera. I don't believe Ripple is going to replace SWIFT. Ripple is one of the complementary networks, which is going to allow those institutions who need real time to make use of that. But we may also see Ripple XRP moving across the SWIFT network as a currency when we're perhaps using something like FX. So I know a lot of people like to dive into Reddit forums and they see people saying XRP is a shit coin. But is that actually true? Because Ripple is solving a $40 trillion legacy payment systems problem and XRP frees up trapped liquidity worldwide due to lack of interoperability between payment systems. So give me a specific example of who's going to use it. So one of the things we've always said is I don't think banks will be the first customers. We've talked about payment providers. And so we have run pilots out there with the MoneyGrams, Western Unions, Mercury FX, Qualix a couple of others, and those are payment providers that have massive treasury operations. Uh, you know, using you know, one random example, you, you have a, a payment provider that has hundreds of millions of dollars of negative working capital because they've taken their dollars or their pesos and they've pre-funded, and they've, they've pre-funded the account, so they go into Mexico, they, once a week, let's say, they'll wire $10 million to Mexico and then debit, 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 debit along the way. Now, sometimes they overfund, sometimes they underfund, the ability to have real-time liquidity is transformational. You know, the, the global pre-funded, what are called nostra vostra relationships, it represents something on the order of magnitude $10 trillion. If we can make that more efficient and more useful, we can actually accelerate the engine of commerce kind of on a global basis. And this was posted on Binance.com from Swift saying that, yes, XRP has the most potential utility of all cryptocurrencies. It could be used on a scale that would dwarf usage by all other digital assets. The market for SWIFT payments is currently measured in the quadrillions. In derivatives, if XRP handles just a small fraction of that amount, the utility analysis that presents itself can be placed aside as a unique 
footnote in XRP price history. Now, if you guys didn't watch my video yesterday that has about 34,000 views, I highly suggest checking that out next, but listen to this section right here. This is super important. And if we go to ACIWorldwide.com, which is the first service provider listed on the official Federal Reserve website, they're saying that early last year, the R3 Consortium conducted a test of a private blockchain amongst 11 banks, including Barclays, UBS, and HSBC. And in this test, which ran over a virtual private network in Microsoft's Azure cloud, banks operating over four continents were able to settle the transactions almost instantaneously compared to settlement times of days or even weeks. And depending on the asset class, with the current systems using used by banks, R3 said the technology could be used by banks to transfer real assets within the next one to two years. So it's coming very, very soon. And in October, the consortium announced it was conducting another trial looking at alternative traditional interbank global payments using the blockchain platform developed by a company called who? Ripple, along with its associated digital currency, XRP. Ripple is one of the first blockchain startups focused on settlement mechanisms and has partnerships with UBS, Santander, Standard Chartered, and many other banks. And reportedly, 12 banks participated in the trial, including Barclays, BMO Financial Group, Bank of Montreal, CIBC, Royal Bank of Canada, and Westpac Institutional Bank. Uh, the purpose was to explore how the use of a digital currency could potentially reduce the cost of traditional cross-border practices. Banks usually keep foreign currency reserves in what are called Nostro accounts in order to be ready to fulfill a cross-border payment. According to the R3, the practice essentially forces banks to trap capital in the digital currency XRP, which offers settlement speeds as fast as five seconds, where Bitcoin can take you know, 10 minutes offers banks an alternative. And the trial, which was successful, demonstrated that banks could make markets for fiat currencies using XRP and the Ripple network, complete authenticated payments without multiple Nostro accounts, enabling them to cut costs and develop additional revenue opportunities. Damn, son, where'd you find this? So can you guys imagine how many banks would adopt this technology, would adopt XRP, decrease their transaction costs, decrease the settlement time, increase their profit margins. Why wouldn't they take advantage of this? Now, here's something that's really interesting because an XR3 employee joined Ripple to lead business development for central banking digital currencies and digital assets, where he says with the approval of Bitcoin ETFs, the world of traditional finance has heralded in the age of cryptocurrency going mainstream. I'm extremely impressed by Ripple's robust enterprise blockchain solutions and the public XRP ledger that have stood the test of time well over a uh, decade processing billions of transactions helping companies and individuals move money in seconds with absolute security and finality. Ripple has proven that regulation and cryptocurrency innovation can coexist in our new global digital economy. And BlackRock CEO Larry Fink stated that all Bitcoin ETFs are merely stepping stones on the path to tokenization. And Ripple's CTO David Swartz outlined that tokenization will serve as one of the cornerstones for the XRP ledger and predicts it will evolve into a trillion dollar market. I'm hoping that we're going to see as real world asset tokenization projects grow, I think the XRP ledger is going to be a really good platform for them to launch on, uh, you, particularly because of the low fees and because of the integration with the DEX, with the proximity to sort of the movement of funds, the ability, you know, if someone's going to buy, what do you want to do with a real world tokenized asset? You want to buy it, you want to sell it, you want to hold it, you want to transfer it. And if you want to buy it and sell it, you want to be able to do that with whatever asset is convenient for you. You don't want to tie, if you tokenize some sort of debt, like you don't want to tie it to US dollars because then that limits access to it to people who have sort of proximity to US dollars. One of the things the XRP ledger is good for is giving you sort of proximity to many different assets and that exchange is seamlessly built in. So I think that's going to make, that's one of the many reasons why the XRP ledger is going to be a good place to launch tokenized real world assets. I think we'll see that in the next year, year and a half. So this is all happening right in front of our face and new news keeps coming out every single day that we're covering on this channel. So if you like content like this, make sure to like, subscribe and share this with a friend. I'm sure they'll appreciate you for this. And uh, Edward Farina posted this saying he found this NASA article from 2008 titled Stellar Ripple that alludes to a galaxy collision that happened 100 million years ago. So is this just a coincidence because 2008 is the exact same year that Bitcoin was created. Is XLM and XRP the final products? He's been saying that Bitcoin is the beta test coin. And this goes all the way back to the NSA, you know, talking about digitizing, uh, creating digital currencies. And the person who was mentioned in that named Tatsuaki Okamoto, who was involved. Yeah, no similarities to Satoshi Nakamoto at all. 
1996 document called How to Make a Mint, the Cryptography of Anonymous Electronic Cash, which includes the NSA's creation of the SHA-256 cryptographic hash function, where leaks are revealing that the NSA and the Pentagon poured vast resources into supercomputers and expansive data facilities in Utah and Maryland. By 2011, the NSA had developed a $895 million supercomputing hub in Fort Meade, Maryland. While SHA-256 is used in Bitcoin, it also just so happens to be one of the most widely used hash algorithms. And the fact that it was made public in 2001 means that everyone had access to it long before Bitcoin was invented, and no one had ever identified a secret backdoor into the algorithm or suggested a credible way it could be cracked. Could it all just be a strange coincidence, or is there something happening behind the scenes where all roads lead to Ripple? Now we can start talking about how the puzzle comes together. DTCC is the clearinghouse for all of the stocks and ETFs, which currently all process through Fedwire in days. And when it flips to DTCC, Digital Assets Processing through FedNow, you will have real-time trade. And so this document right here posted by Chad Steingraber shares how XRP's interledger protocol will enable interoperability across platforms by 2025. So it's very obvious if you made it to this point in this video that all roads are leading to Ripple and XRP, but there's some important questions that we need to ask, like what are the risks? XRP has legal clarity. XRP is not a security. XRP is faster, cheaper, and greener than any other crypto. XRP has the biggest partnerships in the space with Ripple as the company. XRP is the safest crypto to invest in. So will XRP give you the highest returns? I mean, that's debatable because there are other projects out there right now that have given larger returns during this bull run. But we all remember what happened back in 2017 during alt season when altcoins outperformed Bitcoin. XRP was the leading performer. So we just entered into alt season and the vast majority of gains that are going to be made over the next couple years will come from the top altcoins that are part of the new financial system. Now, Bitcoin's sitting at $42,800. That doesn't mean it's not going to be rocky and volatile and turbulent on the way up because in my past few videos, I talked about how we did a 618 retracement on the chart. And usually when that happens, we see Bitcoin correct down going into the halving. But six to 12 months after the halving is when we see the best price performance for Bitcoin and even better price performance for altcoins. So if you want to discover our top altcoin picks first before these videos come out and you want to get early bird access to our financial education platform when that's released, you don't have to have any previous crypto trading experience. All you need to do right now is go to bullrunners.com. It'll be the link right below this video. All you have to do is click more and you'll see it right here. It'll take you to a page that looks like this. Click the green button on the page that says, yes, give me instant access. Put in your best email address. It's free to do so. You get instant access to our Telegram group. You get subscribed to our newsletter and we give you the information first to help you prepare for the worst that's yet to come in this economy because together we're backing up our truck all the way to the bank, grabbing the bags, packing them and stacking them, leaving no bags left behind because we believe that the spending power of the dollar is going to continue to go down in value. That's a fact. Blockchain technology, distributed ledger technology, and cryptocurrencies are going up in interest. That's the truth. And together, you know where we're going. We're going camping on the beaches of the moon. I'll see you guys on the next video. I'll see you on bullrunners.com. As always, you know what to do. Stay bullish.